everyone. Happy to be here. I am Polina, founder and CEO at HeloRack. With our solution, we want to solve three problems. First one, we need to cut greenhouse gas emissions in Europe and in the world as fast as we can. Cost of electricity is very high in many locations and a lack of land space. So by 2050 in Europe, we cannot take any land for energy generation anymore. With our solution, we have one component is hardware. So we place the solar panels on the water uh, in the most cost and eco-efficient way. So this uh, blue part, we manufacture ourselves in Europe. We install the solar panels on top of it and deploy the, the power plant for our customers. Cost of our electricity will be twice less than electricity from the grid, and we don't occupy any land space. We are focusing on near shore locations where half of global population live. And you see, this is our last installation was done in Belgium in our standard port and system could survive wind speed more than 100 kilometers an hour. And the second component of our uh, startup is uh, SAS. So we develop a dashboard where customers can observe uh, behavior of uh, floating solar power plants. We capture all data, wind, wave, uh, tides, in one place and it helps the customer optimize the pressure maintenance as well we can do the prediction with machine learning how much energy we will generate from specific spot in five years and the customers as well can control the power plant remotely typical customers are ports utilities uh, municipalities and the coastal areas so basically any companies near the, the shoreline who would like to reduce co2 emissions and save money on electricity cost Floating solar is a fast growing industry nowadays with annular growth more than 33%. You see, this is potentially we can install 15 megawatts in uh, Valencia port and we don't occupy a lot of uh, water space and it doesn't disturb any maritime activities. Uh, we did a bottom up uh, approach for market size assessment. So we are targeting only Europe uh, only our customer segment, so ports, uh, utilities, and uh, municipalities in Europe. So, and we come up with our target market at least 126 million by 2026 is our current sales strategy. We are operating in harsh conditions at low cost. So, we uh, invented and patented Hydrolog technology. It helps to keep systems stable and robust. As well, we use recycled plastic to produce our floating system. And it helps us to reduce uh, our costs three times compared in with uh, our competitors who is also operating in offshore conditions. So we sell hardware. Uh, we sell access to dashboard. And we also sell the services, engineering, installation, operation, maintenance. We can do different uh, offers, sell only floating system or sell floating system and photovoltaic equipment or all uh, our services in the same package. We are very experienced at team about myself. I am working in energy sector more than 20 years as well. I am a winner of Women in Green Tech. Joshua is COO, uh, has experience uh, to run startup in the past, and he take care of our operation activities. Hashim, the, the PhD from Ecole Centrale de Nan, CTO, and the Peter has more than 40 years of experience in the maritime sector using the business development. So far, we already raised uh, the precede half million, uh, and uh, we installed two projects. We made a patent, we registered trademark, uh, now we are opening open it our seat round and we're uh, looking for achieve milestone to prove our technology at bigger scale. So we plan to install one megawatt next year, expand our manufacturing line, do certification, more the patents, and of course marketing and sales. By 2025, we will go to licensing model and it will help us to scale up faster. By 2026, we will save a lot of CO2, 8 million euro for our customers and land space. This is me. I'm doing uh, 
operation maintenance of our installation in Belgium. Thank you very much. Um, so to highlight, so we already generate revenue. Uh, we have a patents. We tech stars by a company. We are open at our sit round. Please Time is us. up and you are awesome. Sorry, I forgot to give you the one minute, but I gave you a little extra time at the end to, to make up for it. Let's, be, let's bring Craig back in here since Craig is Mr. Energy, so to speak, and which means we should let him uh, take kick things off on the question side of things. Uh, what do you want to know from Hilo Rec? No one has called me that before, but uh, uh, so excellent. Hey, Polina, thank you. Very nice presentation. Um, you know, I've been uh, I, I've been in, in the solar industry, but I've never done anything with floating solar. But, I, you know, I've been seeing sort of projects for the last decade or so of people doing stuff like this. And I'm just wondering, and you showed a little bit on the competitive landscape. What could you talk a little bit more about what you see your advantages are over other mounting solutions for floating solar? So we manufacture system uh, with hydrolog technology. So it works very simple. And uh, basically we capture water inside the floater and this extra water works as a ballast, but it is just water around. We don't pay for this ballast. So if wind will blow, our system will not flip because it becomes so heavy. That's why it can survive in windy and wavy conditions. In terms of compare us with uh, other, uh, other companies, floating solar developers. So we have two types. One who is operating in lakes, so there are no wind waves, just a very calm water. So we will be a little bit more expensive than this technology because they use a conventional blow molded uh, technique to manufacture floaters. And if wind will blow, the system will flip. So, but they are operating in the lakes. Second type of custom uh, competitors uh, offshore applications. Usually uh, they use big metallic structures. And you can imagine if you want to place a lot of solar panels in the water in harsh conditions, you need to build a huge area of metallic structure in the sea. And the cost is uh, very, very high. So their cost three times more than our, if we compare levelized cost of energy, because they use expensive metallic structure. Okay, interesting. well, you answered my second question, which is sort of where can you install this? And uh, yeah, I guess most of the pictures I've seen have been nice calm lakes, but you guys are proposing actually offshore solar. And what will it take to be, uh, you know, what we, we call in the industry bankable? Like what, you know, will, will financing companies finance like actual offshore solar today? Um, uh, do, you know, what do you have to do to sort of prove that, you know, your technology won't flip in a wave um, so that they can finance and insure a system like that? So we call us as near shore floating solar. So we are not targeting very uh, deep sea with uh, very, very high waves because we believe we need to generate and consume energy in the same place. So we are building at near shore and it's not difficult to find unused water space where we can deploy our system in the sea. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, how bankable we are. So we do manufacturing ourselves. We did number of tests of our system we already know cost of our system. We know what will be benefits for the customers. So it can be easily uh, bankable. Uh, the only question we need to show the traction. So that's why we are raising uh, seed to be able to prove our technology at scale. Because usually people look for big projects like uh, 10 megawatt, 50 megawatt and they would see the traction of, of technology. So once we install one megawatt, we can easily go to big projects. And, and do, you, do you anticipate people doing, you know, what, how large practically can you do in the water? Um, how, you know, how large of a system do you expect to be uh, supporting, you know, in the few, five years from now? Will they be doing 100 megawatt floating wind farm, oh, uh, solar farms, or is it always going to be sort of more distributed scale? So we have few letter of intent. Uh, two of them mentioned that they would like to build at 10 megawatt power plants by 2025. So this is our experience, but sometimes they approach with a bigger projects. Awesome. Last kind of detail question is, um, 
how does the cost compare to a ground mount uh, system? Like what's the premium or is there a premium to do, uh, to do an ocean uh, or a, a water mounted system? So our specifically technology will be around 30, 50% more expensive than land base, but don't forget. So first we uh, generate energy more efficiently due to cooling effect from water. So 15% we will gain of the cooling effect. And the second, we don't occupy land space. So people can use this land space for something else for agricultural uh, usage or storage or uh, retail. So right. two other benefits can compensate a little bit more expensive technology. Awesome. All right, I'll, I'll pause, let Matt, let Matt go. So we have things swimming in the ocean. Do you have some type of way to, to keep wildlife out of going where you are? I'm envisioning like a kid in a pool trying to come up under a tube, but with so, animals. Actually, animals will like our system because uh, they uh, fish, for example, they understand in this area specifically, no one will catch them and they can gather around uh, these uh, areas in the sea because they're not afraid of fishermen. And also they can build a kind of houses uh, near um, anchor blocks, for example. So they can, they can grow, uh, like they can hide there, they can have um, some activities there. So they will not be scared to be around this uh, system. I was thinking more like the seal that was looking for a great place to sun bath. Yeah. Like, to, like jumping up on top of the system. Yeah, I mean, we we do it on like near shore locations in industrial areas. So usually uh, whales or dolphins will not come uh, in these uh, structures. But we had experience. Uh, so seagulls, it was big storm in Austenda port, uh, wind speed 115 kilometer an hour. It was so st uh, strong wind. And birds actually sit on our uh, structure and wait when wind uh, come down. So it was kind of uh, shelter. Sorry, I didn't say I didn't say seagull. I said seals. Like, are 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 they're quite heavy? I'm not sure how the the system would would handle big seals hopping on these guys. Uh, yeah. So seal will not come in industrial areas near shore locations. So they live in the deep sea. I. Okay. Um, I, I've been, I've been to a lot of ports and we see a lot of seals around, so okay. I don't know. I don't know necessarily, but that was just one potential concern that I, potential concern that I had. How do, um, how do the changing energy systems and prices affect your future outlook on the business? What does it mean for you? Are you seeing a lot more demand? Yeah, for sure. With the current, uh, energy crisis, um, People want to use more renewables. We have to rid off of Russian gas. So all of this, I see uh, more requests for such system. And obviously we need to have energy mix of renewables from different sources. So wind, land, solar, uh, floating solar. So uh, and the people more and more looking for floating solar is at energy mix. And is there a limitation on where you can deploy? in terms of weather, temperatures, et cetera? Yes, so we targeting areas with a wave up to two meters and the wind speed uh, up to 160 kilometers an hour. And then I might've missed this, but um, either way, what's the, what's the payback period compared to traditional land-based solar, be that rooftop or be that at commercial scale? So di difficult to say, uh, CapEx of our system, a little bit more expensive. So I would assume that return on investment will be a little bit longer, uh, but we need to calculate it from case to case. Uh, in our system, return on investment, for example, in Cyprus, where a lot of sun uh, can be around five years. So it's also like, uh, medium scale power plant. Understood. Craig, do you have more questions for Hilo Rec? Uh, just the last one was, uh, do you get any pushback from the module companies on warranty being in the water, particularly I would think salt water? Yes, they should pass a uh, salt mist test. Uh, we also, uh, junction box should be IP68. 
this uh, uh, also better to use glass glass uh, panels, but otherwise uh, ah, also the the cables DC cables we need to make sure that they uh, okay for salty environment. Um, Got it. So there there are products that are that are fine with that um, or that are warranted for that scenario then. Exactly. Awesome. 